Did you know that you can automatically bill your clients in Stripe if they have a credit card on file with you? And when I say automatically, I mean without going into Stripe and creating an invoice and then applying funds to the payment on file. No, I want to do this with an automation so that I click a button inside of Airtable and boom, that client is invoiced and billed on the payment method that I've already established for them. Well, this is all entirely possible and it is exactly what we're going to be breaking down in this video. We're doing a deep dive on the automations required here. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I'm the owner here at Gap Consulting and we help you get organized and automated with no code tools. It is our mission to help you save up to 20 hours of your time every week with automation. So if that's of interest, if you are new to the world of automation, I highly recommend that you start with the key fundamentals and I provide them for you inside my free training that you can pick up at garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration. I will include links to that training below so that you can get up and running quickly, watch that presentation when it makes sense for you, and master all of the key fundamentals to no code automation. But here we are, we are gonna be breaking down two relatively complicated automations that are already built inside of make.com, formerly known as Integramet. Now, before I get into it, I have to first warn you that I did not personally build these automations. That is very unusual. 99% of the time, the things we feature on this channel are built by me, but I have to give credit where it is due. A very talented developer on our team by the name of Camille put these together. So these are actually her works that I'm gonna be sharing with you here. Now, let's get on into it and we're gonna jump into the first automation. Before we can automatically bill a client, of course, we have to first assume, or this presupposes, that we have a method of payment on file for that client. And the only way that we're ever gonna get a method of payment on file is if that client has already completed an invoice with us inside of Stripe. So before we get to the point where we are auto billing clients on future invoices, we have to have the original invoice. And what we also have to do, not only is it enough to say, hey, we had them charge that particular card or make that payment through whatever method, we also need to establish that that is the key fundamental way that that particular client will pay. We do this by setting a default payment method and we can do this with our first automation. So let's jump into how that first one works. Here I am inside of the scenario in make.com and the trigger of the automation can be a webhook. In this particular case, we are using a webhook and we are passing with it the record ID of the record in Airtable that this pertains to. So the webhook trigger sends along a record ID and now we're going to look up the particular invoice that was just paid. So basically what the webhook says is, hey, an invoice was paid and here's the record ID for that particular invoice. Let's go to the next step. So now we are going to find this inside of Airtable. Establish your Airtable connection. Of course, link to the proper base and the proper table, but specifically we need to look up that record ID. So this record ID is going to be a unique identifier that was passed along inside of the trigger webhook. And now we're finding information about that specific record ID. So for us, we are sending our invoices from our sprints table. You might have a specific table just for invoices. That is where you want to search for the particular record that triggered the automation. All right, that's it for this step. Now we have the record in Airtable and we are ready to start talking to Stripe using the information that we found in that record. So we are first going to apply a filter here. We are only gonna move forward if and only if the invoice ID inside of Airtable is not blank. Now an invoice ID is something that our system is passing to Airtable at the time that we create an invoice in Stripe. So we have another separate automation that says when this invoice is created, I'm gonna go into Airtable, build a record for that invoice and add the invoice ID to that record. This is a unique way that we can look up that invoice inside of Stripe. So of course we can't go on to the next step unless we know what the invoice ID is that was just paid. So now that we've established that we found the record in Airtable, 
and we've established that there exists an invoice ID, we can move on to the next step. Without any errors, we are now able to look up an invoice inside of Stripe. So this particular connection here is going to be to our Stripe account and we are using the action of retrieving an invoice. And here we are going to look up the invoice inside of Stripe based on the invoice ID that we just established exists thanks to the previous step. All right, so now we come out of this particular step with the invoice ID that was just paid from Stripe. Next step is to retrieve the customer. Now it's important to note that the customer inside of Stripe is very different from the invoice inside of Stripe. A customer object is gonna contain things like a customer ID, the spend by that customer, the payment terms of that customer. Inside of the invoice, we have the invoice creation, total, and of course, an invoice is assigned to a customer. So it's important that we perform these two searches separately. Notice that we searched for the invoice based on the ID, and then when we go to retrieve the customer, we found the customer information in the previous step, but we don't get the full list of customer detail. We only know the customer ID, and so we need to go deeper and get more information about that specific customer. So after retrieving the invoice, now we retrieve the customer, and we are using the customer ID from the customer that we found when we retrieved the invoice in step three. All right, so now, we have the invoice in Stripe, we have the customer in Stripe, and we're ready for the next step in the automation. We're going to retrieve the payment intent. Now the payment intent is if this succeeded or failed when the customer went to pay this invoice. And the payment intent has its own specific ID that is unique for every single attempted payment that Stripe processes. So this particular payment ID is coming from the invoice that we retrieved again in step three. So we are searching Stripe and we are trying to retrieve that payment intent based on the ID that we found in the third step. Now we have all the pieces that we need. So only if the intent to pay succeeded. Remember I mentioned that a payment in Stripe might fail somebody might try to make a payment that doesn't go through. We only wanna move forward to our final step here if the payment succeeded. So all of this work, all of these steps that we've set up so far, all hinges upon this last piece that that payment went through successfully. And if it did, now it's time to update the customer. And what do we wanna update? Well, we're going to update the customer ID based on the customer that we found in previous steps. But what we really need to update all the way down here is the default payment method ID. It's the default payment method that we are trying to update with the payment that was used to process the previous invoice. So I am updating the default payment method ID with the method of payment that was used when closing out this first invoice. So what does this do for us? Well, now we have a default payment method for our client that just paid an invoice. So now we are able to say for future invoices, well, I'm gonna create a future invoice and charge the payment method that's been put on file for that particular client. If you don't have this automation in place, then we won't be automatically creating the default payment method for the client. And by default, then we won't be able to charge the client because we don't have a method actually on file in the default setting. So that's the whole purpose of this automation. Now we're gonna drop into a slightly more complicated automation where we can create invoices and automatically charge that method on file. Let me go through this one with you step by step. It all starts from a trigger in Airtable. In this particular case, something in Airtable is going to trigger the automation, but you could trigger this from a webhook or smart suite or any other software tool. Basically what we're saying is we're gonna pass along some information about an invoice and some information about a customer and we're going to then create an invoice for that customer and charge the payment method on file. Here's how it works. Whatever that trigger is, we're going to then move on to extrapolate more information about what we're doing here. So in our particular case, we're searching our base in Airtable. We're looking at our sprints table, which is again where we store our invoices 
and we are looking up the record ID that triggered this automation. So we're finding information about the invoice and about the customer that's assigned to that invoice inside of Airtable. Now, bear in mind, all we've done is created this invoice inside of Airtable. We haven't actually invoiced the client. We haven't charged a method on file yet. And so that's setting all of this up, putting all of this into motion. Now we've got a little bit of a filter here. This particular filter is saying that the customer has an email or a Stripe ID or just an ID. Now we can't move forward if we don't have one of these three elements. If we don't have an email address, if we don't have a Stripe ID for the customer, if we don't have the ID for the record, well, we can't move forward. And so this is a little bit of a fail safe to make sure that our automation does not error out. Only if we have one of those pieces of information will we go into the heart of the automation. This little break here is basically saying that if we can't fulfill that, if we don't have one of these conditions for our filter, well then we're going to break. And basically this prevents us from erroring out on our automation. So if we go and we search for this record and it doesn't pass this filter, well then by default, we're just gonna stop the automation and no harm, no foul, no errors will be created here and we can just wait for the next one. All right, so assuming that we do have one of those elements, now we need to get the customer inside of Stripe. So how do we do that? Well, we will use the billing contact Stripe ID. This billing contact Stripe ID is going to be a unique ID for the person that has the customer object in Stripe. So by using this Stripe ID, we can identify the customer and that's what we're doing. We're finding the information about that customer in Stripe. Now, if the customer exists, so we've tried to get the customer. If we are able to get a customer, and by that we say, well, we have a customer ID, so we can move on. If we have that customer ID, then now we have the information about the customer, we can create the invoice, create the item, create the invoice, finalize it, and then go back to Airtable. But if we were not able to actually find that customer, then we're gonna go down a different path. The different path is, well, we've got an invalid customer ID. So this is the default. If the customer exists, we will go up this way. And if not, then we will fall down the default path, which is we didn't have a success on this filter. So then what happens? Well, then we're going to search customers. Now remember, we first provided the filter that we have email or a customer ID. So here we're saying, we're gonna look up the customer by customer ID. If that fails, well then in our next step here, we're going to search by the customer's email because it's possible that the customer does have a Stripe ID and we just haven't put it into our system yet. And so therefore our automation didn't know. So here we are saying, well, let's look for the customer again, but this time rather than searching for the customer by their ID, I'm gonna search for the customer by email and I only wanna bring back one response. Once I'm happy with this, then we will go into the next stage here. Either no customer is found, meaning this search also did not provide a customer. If that's the case, then we have to create a customer. So we searched for a customer by ID, we searched for a customer by email, and we couldn't find one in either case. It's time for us to create a customer. So here we come in, we say, this is the billing contact email, this is the billing contact first name, and you can fill out various other pieces of information for this contact. Now, assuming that we've just created that customer, we're going to then go back to Airtable and make sure that Airtable knows what that Stripe ID is for that customer. That way in the future, we don't run back into this problem and we don't have to accidentally create a new customer in Stripe. And a resume basically says, hey, I wanna go back to a previous step in the automation now that I've done this. We're resuming back to module 58 here. So module 58 is right here. That's where we created the customer. So what this is saying in normal plain speak is we came in, we looked for the customer by ID, didn't find anything. We looked again for the customer by email, we didn't find anything. So what do we do? We go to the router and we said, no customers were found. So then we went and created a customer and added that information back to Airtable. Resume kicks us back to right here. So this means then that before this step, we'll go back to this router and here it is, well, now we have a customer, right? We found a matching customer because we just created one. So this allows us to then move on to the next step, 
add the Stripe ID to the client record, which we've already done, and then go back to this resume. This takes us to object 54, which allows us to go back to this step in the automation and start again. And of course, now we have searched for a customer that does in fact exist, so we can take the top path. I know there's a lot here. These resumes can be tricky, but if you go through it step by step, it does make sense. Now, we are at the point where we've created a customer or we found a customer. One of those two things was true the first time. And so now we're ready to create that invoice item. We come in, we create the invoice, we bring in the information from Airtable and create the invoice. Be sure to add two extra zeros here because Stripe always works in pennies and does not include the decimals in the particular invoice. Also be sure to label out your currency based on your country of origin and create that invoice item. Now, once we have the invoice item, we can then create the invoice itself. So we can pop in here and send the invoice. We can choose the collection method here. You'll notice that we can charge automatically or send the invoice. In this particular automation, it's set to send, but if we had set it to charge automatically, we could do that as well to automatically charge the default payment method on file that I highlighted for you in the previous automation. Now, once we're done here, we will finalize the invoice and we are simply passing in the invoice ID that we created in the previous step and we are finalizing that invoice. If you don't finalize an invoice, it will remain as a draft inside of Stripe and you can't collect payment on it until it's been finalized. Now, our invoice has been finalized in Stripe, so we're gonna go back to Airtable and update Airtable with that information. We're going back to the very record ID that started it all that came from the very beginning of the automation. And we're gonna scroll on down here and update the invoice ID inside of Airtable. So we're storing the invoice ID inside of Airtable for future reference if we ever need to quickly look it up in Stripe. And we also like to put the Sprint invoice link in here. So this is the hosted invoice URL that allows people to just use that link and go and make the payment. We also store this in Airtable so that if our clients call and say, hey, where's that invoice again? We have that URL easily on file and we can just send it right on over. Now we're also updating some stuff that relates to the date because the way that we work with our clients, we want to start the sprint date immediately. So we're bringing in that now, but other than that, those are the key components that go into creating an automation to automatically invoice clients with just a simple push of a button and send them a working link from Stripe where they can just pay you directly. All of this driven from Airtable and driven through Make Automation. I know we went super fast in this video, but if you need help on this or customization for your own version, do swing by our website. We have our consultant standing by and they can perform these very automations for you. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so that you see more videos like this that have to do with no code tools and automation. And in the meantime, keep on building.